Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have some fun and do terrible things to a golf cart. Just terrible things. So if you're new to the channel, this is our gasoline electric golf cart. And what makes this golf cart special is we got rid of the expensive and heavy batteries and replaced them with a small gasoline engine and an alternator. This novel idea is what we're calling the petroleum battery. The unorthodox method that we're using to power this golf cart is how we were able to reanimate a dead electric golf cart and get it back on the road. And best of all, it'll never need batteries again. Nope, we don't need no stinking batteries. Now, despite not having batteries, this electric golf cart zips down the road no problems, which is nice. Now, I really like this goofy contraption, and we're still doing a lot of important testing on it. But, at the same time, I feel like we need to have some fun and look at some other options like a diesel electric version. So, we're going to do a diesel electric conversion on this beast. Yep, the vintage Cushman Desperado is coming out of retirement. And we're going to make it roll coal in order to provide the electricity that we need for the electric drive motor. I'm pretty sure this will actually be the very first diesel electric golf cart to ever exist on the planet Earth. And you folks are the first humans to witness this event. Now, this is exactly why people subscribe to this channel, and perhaps it's time you do as well. Alright, let's get started. The diesel that we'll be using in today's experiment is a 3 horsepower 196cc air-cooled engine. Now don't let the looks fool you, this innocent looking engine was manufactured in Satan's workshop. And what I mean by that is, this is a noisy, cantankerous little animal. And when it's running, it shakes violently and has an ear-splitting banging noise as it chooches under a load. As a matter of fact, I have to wear ear protection when I run this engine. Now despite its drawbacks, it does run and it gets the job done. You see, We've been using this engine for well over a year now and we've been feeding it all sorts of questionable homemade fuels and we haven't been able to put this thing out of its misery yet. So, it definitely has a strong will to live, that's for sure. Now, I love diesel engines and this one's a good runner, but it's noisy. The noise is unfortunately not from the exhaust system. Instead, it's the typical diesel sound and with a lightweight aluminum block like this, well, the sound is beyond loud. So, in case you weren't paying attention, this engine is loud and there's nothing we can do about it. Anyway, the Cushman Desperado is our experimental vehicle and we use it to develop the petroleum battery concept. Now, it was originally fitted with a 6.5 horsepower 212cc Predator engine. However, that engine ended up in the much nicer club car golf cart. And we'll take this thing for a ride later in the video to test the charging system we recently installed and to show you how much nicer this one is. So with the gasoline engine tucked inside the club car, now we have an empty space under the seat of the Cushman that needs to be filled with an angry little diesel engine. I think we can do something about that. So this little diesel engine appears similar to the 212cc gasoline Predator engine, but it's not a direct replacement. And what I mean by that is, you can't just swap engines and have everything line up. The diesel engine needs to be offset about 1 inch or 25 millimeter in order to get the pulleys to line up. And that was a big enough difference to make the diesel not fit in the same space as the Predator engine. So we had to shuffle around all the stuff to get this to fit inside the Desperado. And I'm going to say it fits, but it doesn't fit good. And that's fine. The Desperado is a less than perfect contraption. Now, if you're new to the channel, well, I encourage you to watch the previous videos if you have any questions. Now, the good news is, today I'll give a brief description on how we're able to get an electric golf cart to move without using batteries. So this alternator is directly connected to the electric drive motor in the golf cart. Now, there is a forward reverse switch somewhere between the alternator and the motor, and we don't show it in this diagram, but it's there. Anyway, the alternator is used as a source of power, and here's the neat little trick that we're doing. We're also using the alternator as a DC motor controller. So yeah, the alternator has dual purposes. It's a power source and a DC motor controller. So to get the golf cart to move, well, just press down on this drive-by wire accelerator pedal and that'll get this little $12 PWM power supply to feed voltage to the field coils on the alternator. And at that point, the alternator is going to start generating a massive amount of power to feed to the electric motor. Now, we do have a little battery in the system to power the electronics and recently we developed a way to keep this little battery charged. 
but the power that this circuit consumes is very little, and the battery can survive quite a while without needing to be recharged. Now, mixing cheap electronics with a semi-powerful mechanical system can be very dangerous, so we also have an emergency stop button in the circuit to cut the feed to the alternator in the event something goes wrong. And I've used this e-stop switch more than a few times during the development of the petroleum battery. We also have another cutout switch connected to the brake pedal as a secondary emergency stop device. Keep in mind, there's always a possibility of losing control of this vehicle, and these safety devices are absolutely necessary. Anyway, here's the $12 power supply that I showed in the diagram. Now, pay no attention to this junk. This stuff is not being used and actually should be removed. And as you can see over here, we have the drive-by-wire accelerator pedal exactly where you would expect it to be. And over here is the emergency stop switch, and I also have an on-off switch, which I forgot to mention before. So it's real simple the way this system works. Fast forward a few hours, and we have the angry diesel engine installed in the Desperado. A perfect match if you ask me. Let's go ahead and start the engine and verify everything still works. Yeah, it's noisy. I just turned down the volume a whole bunch and it'll stay that way for all the tests that we do. I don't think anybody wants to listen to this thing at regular volume. All right, let's arm the system. And no smoke. I reckon that's as good as it gets. Now let me disengage the emergency stop switch. I do have the rear axle on this beast off the ground just in case it wants to try to escape. So far, so good. Let's goose the throttle and see what happens. Yep, the system still works. Not too shabby. This is the world's first diesel electric golf cart. Now, if it moves, well, it'll be the first drivable diesel electric golf cart. I reckon there may be a reason why something like this has never been built before. Right now I have the exhaust directed to flow in this direction. This is less than ideal, but good enough for now. There are plenty of holes in this jalopy for the exhaust to exit, so I'm not too worried. Fast forward a few minutes and the golf cart's ready for its maiden voyage. Hopefully this ends better than the Titanic. So my buddy Eric is on his way over to help with the camera. Now this thing vibrates too much and there isn't any place to mount a camera and we need a human to hold the camera. Eric's pretty good at that. But now it means the cart has to haul two people. Will it be able to do that? Well, we'll find out soon enough. So while I was waiting for Eric, I went ahead and installed the pull starter. Now I've never started this engine by the pull start before, so this will be interesting. The first thing is to set the compression relief gizmo to the start position. Check. Now advance the throttle to 100% and lock it in place. Check. And pull. The angry diesel engine has awakened from its slumber. Eh, that actually wasn't too bad. Okay, so this contraption is all warmed up and now we can take it on the street to raise hell. So even with the seat in place, this thing is still extremely loud and stinky. The good news is, well, the engine's on the passenger side and that's not where I'm gonna be sitting. The cameraman gets to sit on top of that hot mess. And we're off. The accelerator pedal is not calibrated to work perfectly with the power that this engine can generate, so I have to be careful not to give this thing too much throttle, otherwise the engine will stall. Now already this thing is going pretty fast, so the diesel will work to get this thing going down the road. Now I'm afraid due to the noise, this won't exactly be the most ideal form of transportation, but it's still better than walking. I guess another way of looking at this is, I would rather drive this thing than a PT Cruiser, so it could be worse. 
This stinky, noisy, three horsepower diesel engine that was assembled by Satan himself actually works a lot better than I thought it would. However, I can't seem to get this buggy to go any faster. Normally, the Desperado can achieve mind-bending speeds of over 20 miles per hour, and I feel like we're not going that fast right now. No clue to how fast this thing is actually going, but I don't have enough wind in my hair. Now, on a nice day like today, wind in the hair is a valid way to measure speed. So, this experiment is not a total bust, it's actually far from it. You see, I need a second golf cart to develop the Arduino-based control system, and this underpowered cart is going to be perfect for that. Now, in theory, a microcomputer can fully optimize the power that the engine makes to the amount of power it takes to move this contraption. This is something that computers can do a lot better than humans, and the reason is, there's a lot of calculations required to keep track of the watts being consumed, and with a computer, well, we can push the engine right up to its limit and not worry about stalling the engine. The diesel electric Desperado did okay. Not great, but okay. Overall, this is just a bad idea, and that's because of the noise. Now, I do have to put an extension on the exhaust so we can vent it outside the engine compartment. Once I do that, then we can take this thing on a 10-mile endurance and fuel economy test, which will be coming up soon. There's actually a lot of space back here, and I was thinking I could mount a 13 horsepower 420cc engine in this area, and that way, well, we could test the performance of a much larger engine. Perhaps even go with two alternators. It's just a thought. Does anybody want to see how a 420cc petroleum battery would perform? Just right. Do the 420, please, in the comment section, and if enough people respond, we'll do that. Of course, that would make this the only diesel, gasoline, electric golf cart in the known universe. Hmm, interesting. Now, in a previous video, I asked you folks if you wanted to see us test this 10 amp charging system on the 212cc Predator engine. Well, the overwhelming response was yes, and the parts have been ordered and they should arrive by this weekend. Hopefully that'll be in the next video. Anyway, let's see if the Desperado has enough power to pull a 3,000 pound Chevy truck. Now, since there are no hills in Kansas, we improvise and do a monster truck pull to show that the golf cart has power on the low end. The way the math works on something like this, the little diesel should have no problem doing this. And it did it. That's a relief. Now, let's see if we can push the truck back. Yep, no problem. This cart actually has more low-end power than the fancy red golf cart. Interesting. So the diesel electric Cushman Desperado is stinky, noisy, and it vibrates violently. Probably not going to get this thing on the golf course anytime soon. But keep in mind, by definition, this is an electric golf cart. Anyway, I feel like we need to add an exhaust pipe of some sort to make this thing slightly more refined. Now, this hole on the side lines up perfectly with the exhaust on the engine, so I think that's what we're going to be doing. In the previous episode, we fitted the fancy red golf cart with a low-cost gizmo to help keep the little 12-volt battery charged. Unfortunately, due to the snow, we weren't able to road test this thing. Well, today the weather is perfect, so let's take this thing for a ride, and I can show you folks that the onboard charging system actually works. So I paused the video for a moment to explain a few things. This meter here shows the voltage at the 12 volt battery, and the way we're going to confirm that the onboard battery charging system is working is, well, to keep an eye on this gauge. Now, when this gauge goes above 12 volts, well, that's confirmation that the battery is charging. So if you haven't seen the previous video, what we're doing is we're skimming some of the power that's going to the drive motor and sending it to the battery charging circuit. And what that means is the golf cart needs to be moving for the onboard battery charger to work. So basically, at speeds above 5 miles per hour, we're sending juice to the little 12 volt battery. Now, the onboard battery charging system is capable of making 10 amps, which is plenty of power to keep the little battery charged. 
This red fancy golf cart uses the exact same low cost electronics that we're using on the Desperado. However, this cart also has an automatic engine throttle and that allows the engine to idle quietly until the accelerator is pressed. Once the accelerator is pressed, the RPM of the gasoline engine will ramp up to 3600 RPM so the engine can develop peak horsepower. All the math that makes this system work is based on the peak horsepower the engine can make. It looks like we're definitely charging the little battery, which is nice. Speaking about nice, the nice thing about this onboard battery charging system is it was cheap to build using off the shelf parts. The only real concern is, will this system survive the summer heat? Now, more than likely, we'll have some issues, but I think stuff like that can be solved easily. But, just in case, we're also going to be testing a way more expensive 10 amp charging system, and hopefully that'll be in the next episode. The more expensive 10 amp system should be more or less a nuts and bolts plug and play installation, which is definitely more appealing for most of the people watching these videos. Anyway, the purpose of these experiments is to find the best and most cost effective way to reanimate a dead electric golf cart and get it back on the road without using batteries. So far, we've had great success in proving it's possible. This golf cart series was made possible by the generous support from my patrons. I really appreciate all the support from my patrons and the thousands of subscribers who tune in every week. This channel doesn't do sponsored videos out of respect to the viewers and that means we have to keep an eye on our budget. That works out great for the viewers because we actually do affordable projects, but you do need to have some skills if you want to do similar projects. I had a lot of fun today and I hope you did as well. The Outlaw Cushman Desperado Diesel Electric Golf Cart will be back soon for a complete road test. It'll be interesting to see how this thing performs when compared to this fancy red golf cart. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Until then.